Hi, Ithri. I hope you're all feeling good today. It's Friday, so we're nearly at the weekend. Now, today is the day we've all been looking forward to. It's the day we write our final um, versions of our non-chronological reports about the ancient Greek gods and goddesses. Before we do that, I want to share three great pieces of writing from yesterday. Yesterday, we were writing our paragraph about the goddesses, our first draft, um, with a real focus on making sure we used our subordinating conjunctions accurately so that our complex sentences made sense. So what I'm going to do is choose a sentence from each of these pieces of writing to share with you um, that we really loved. So this first piece of writing here, the complex sentence that we loved was, when babies were born, Hestia's blessing would be given as she was the goddess of home and hearth. Fantastic complex sentence. It actually uses two subordinating conjunctions. So a big well done to you. This paragraph here was written by a child who used our scaffold um, and our gap filling activity to help her be successful um, yesterday. The sentence that we really liked from this piece of writing was, although Hera was married to Zeus, she got very jealous of other goddesses. Super use of the subordinating conjunction, although. And finally, this paragraph here, the sentence that we loved was, Aphrodite could make anyone love her because she was the goddess of love and beauty. Super sentence. And we love that you've used because to explain why Aphrodite could make anybody love her. So a huge well done to those three children, but also to everybody, because we're really noticing that you are becoming more accurate at using your subordinating conjunctions. Now, today, as I mentioned, we are writing our non-chronological report, and we're going to be using all of the features that we have learnt over the past three weeks. And there are so many features that we've learnt, so you should be really proud of yourself. So we're just going to rewind and remember all of those features before we use them. So a non-chronological report is a report that doesn't follow a time order. We know that the purpose of a non-chronological report is to give information, to inform. It's a non-fiction text. The audience can be anybody, but today I want you to think about who your audience is for this piece of writing. Who do you want to read your non-chronological report about the gods and goddesses? You might want to give it to a family member once you've written it, a younger or an older brother or sister who might be interested and want to know more about the ancient Greek gods and goddesses. You might want to call or video call or Zoom, I'm not sure, um, a family member who might want to find out more about them. Okay, so have a think about that today. Who do you want to share your writing with? We have learned lots of presentation features that you can see here. Two are missing, and I wonder if you can remember which two presentational features are missing here. Pause the screen and have a little chat about that with somebody around you. Super, everybody. So this first one is subheadings, and I'm sure you all notice that. Our mini headlines that come throughout the text and summarise what the next section or paragraph is about. Who remembered what this feature was here? Well done, it's captions. Who remembers what captions are? Super, that short description underneath or beside an image or diagram to explain what it's about. So here are our presentation features, titles, subheadings, paragraphs, images or diagrams, captions, text boxes, bullet points, and numbered lists. These are the features that we can see as soon as we look at the text. And finally, the language features that we have learned over the past three weeks are facts, adverbs, adverbial phrases, and oh, what's this one? I'm sure you're all shouting at me now um, to tell me what this feature is because we've been really, really and drilling down and focusing on this feature over the past two weeks. Complex sentences, well done. And we're all super at using them now. Okay, so today, Friday the 29th of January, 2021, we are learning to write a non-chronological report 
using presentational and language features. How new learning is practiced and why? So that we can give our reader information about the ancient Greek gods and goddesses. Now, we are really, really great at using our language features and we've had lots of practice using them, haven't we? Because we've already written our three paragraphs um, that we're going to include in our writing today. We haven't had a go yet at using the presentational features in our own writing. So that's quite new for us today. Okay, so before we do that, we're just going to do a quick rewind to remind ourselves of what they look like and where they usually come in a text. So I'm going to show you three different non-chronological reports and a presentational feature from each of those um, is missing. You need to use your knowledge of those features to work out which presentational feature is missing. Let's have a look. So here is our first non-chronological report. Here, behind this box, is the presentational feature that is missing. What is it? Well done, Year 3. Hopefully you were saying the title, Miss McCabe. How will we know what this text is about if we haven't got a title? Usually our title is at the top of the text and it was really obvious that that was missing. The title of this text was Tutankhamun's Tomb. That is what our text is about. Well done. Okay, next one. A non-chronological report about sharks. This is a shark fact file. What do you notice that is missing as soon as you look at this page? Something that most readers love to see in non-chronological reports. It brings the writing to life. It helps them to see what the reader, um, sorry, what the writer is writing about. Well done. Images, they're so important in a non-chronological report and I'm sure you all got that one. Finally, our text about tigers. We've got th two different presentational features missing on this one. So these three features here are all the same. And then we've got another presentational feature here. So pause the screen um, and have a little chat about what presentational features you think are missing here. Okay, let's look at these three here. I mean, take those boxes away. Uh, this says, what do tigers look like? It's a different colour to the rest of the paragraph and it's bigger. Where do tigers live? And what do tigers eat? These are subheadings, aren't they? They summarise what the next section of the text is about. I'm sure you all got that one. And finally, a little bit trickier, this one. What do you think this feature here is? A good clue is that it's underneath an image. What's usually underneath an image? Let's read it first. It says, it says, photo courtesy of Hans Steiglitz, granted under Creative Commons license. So this small bit of writing explains who took this photograph of the tiger. It's a caption, well done. Super work, year three. Hopefully, that short rewind has reminded you of our presentational features. Now it's time for us to use them in our own writing. So, today you will need um, some resources to be successful. You will need your box set book or a piece of paper. Um, you will need your pencil a ruler as always if we make any mistakes um, you need your three paragraphs from the past two weeks and um, your introduction your paragraph about the gods and your paragraph about the goddesses don't worry if you missed any of those you can still have a go at this today you also need your checklist that was put onto class dojo let me just share that with you now that's going to help you with your writing today because you can tick each of the features off as we use them. So that's this here. Um, you also need, and in fact, you don't need anything else, but you can 
um, get some colours if you have any at home because you can use your colours to um, colour in your image once you have drawn that later. Don't worry if you don't have any, um, you don't definitely need them. So pause the screen now and make sure that you've got all of those resources before we start our writing. Hopefully everybody has got everything that they need now. So now it is time for us to use it. We are going to use all of the features that we know presentation features and language features to write our non-chronological report. And you should remember that our non-chronological report is going to look a little bit, hopefully, like this um, example here, okay? So what I am going to do now is change my screen so that you can see my book and hopefully my checklist as well because we're going to use that as we are writing. Okay, year three, let's get writing. So we're going to use our checklist, hopefully you can see that on the screen, to help us remember what features to include when and what order um, to do our writing in. So the first thing that we are going to include in our non-chronological report is, of course, our title so that our reader knows what our text is about. My checklist tells me that our title is Ancient Greek Gods and Goddesses. I am going to write my title across two pages because I know I have written um, enough in my paragraphs to go over two pages and you have probably done the same too. So I'm going to write my title in my margin here along the top. We also know that a title is big and bold. So I'm going to use capital letters for my title too. Ancient, oh, let me just get my pencil. Ancient. Remember those finger spaces in between. And I'm going to come on to my next page. And goddesses. Remember the spelling of this is on your checklist. I've written my title. Now I'm going to underline it with my ruler to make it stand out even more your ruler down so that your line doesn't go wonky and there we go so now I can tick off my title I'm going to do an invisible tick because I will have to keep swapping over the screens and it will take lots of time so you've just got to imagine we've got an imaginary tick there next to the title okay next on my checklist I can see that I need to write my introduction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewind in my book and I'm going to find my introduction here, okay? So here I can see my introduction. Did you know that ancient Greeks believed in many different gods and goddesses? In every city state, temples were built for the patron god or goddess so that people could pray to the gods. Interestingly, there were 12 main gods and goddesses and they lived in Mount Olympus. My introduction introduces what my text is about. When I'm writing this today, I need to remember that anything that I edited or changed in this first draft, I need to include in my final draft, just like we would at school. So I know that here in my first sentence, I forgot to use a capital letter for my proper noun, the Greeks. So today I must remember to use a capital G for Greeks, okay? I'm just going to show you um, me writing that first sentence for my introduction paragraph. I'm going to write that on this first page here. It's not going to go over my two pages. Okay, so I'm going to miss a line after my title and start with my capital letter, switching my top line. 
it, finger space. You know, that bit back so I remember what I was writing, ancient Greeks. I must remember my capital letter because that was a change I made, a correction I made. Ancient Greeks. Believed in many different gods and goddesses. I need to remember to use my question mark. Did you know that many, sorry, that ancient Greeks believed in many different gods and goddesses? This is great because I've remembered to include my correction from my first draft. Now what I'm going to do is write the rest of my introduction paragraph. I'm going to um, pause the video whilst I do this. Whilst I do mine, I'd like you to write your title and your introduction paragraph too. After we've done that, we will move on to the next part of our non-chronological report. I have written my title and in my introduction, hopefully you have done the same too. So invisible tick now next to my introduction on my checklist. Okay, next up, I have my subheading, which is gods. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave a line between my introduction and my subheading. And I'm going to write my subheading on my next line. I'm actually going to write it in the middle of the line as well. And then I am going to underline my subheading so that it stands out. Invisible tick next to my subheading. Now I need to write my paragraph about the gods and my checklist also tells me that I need to include an image with a caption about one of my gods. So a little top tip here um, to that you can use if you want to is you can draw the box for your image and your caption before you start writing your paragraph, okay? So I'm going to include my image just here on the right-hand side of my page. So what I'm going to do with my ruler now is I'm going to draw um, the box that my image is going to go in. I'm going to make it... Um, Five, a five centimeter square, so all sides are the same. So I'm going to go from my zero centimeters to my five centimeters. We're applying our uh, measuring skills here that you've been doing with Mr. Jones. My next side is going to be five centimeters long as well. And again, okay, so in that box there, I am going to draw my picture of the god that I choose. Underneath, you can just draw a little box for your caption as well. So that can be two centimeters. This like that. Okay. After I've written my paragraph, I can draw my picture and my caption. Okay. 
So I need to now write my paragraph about the gods. Again, we've already written this. So all we need to do is rewind in our box and find that paragraph about the gods. My paragraph is just here. It's quite a big paragraph, okay? So what I'm going to do now, just like before, is write this paragraph onto my page. Now I'm just going to show you something that's important because <clears throat> you're going to write around your image and caption, okay? So I'm going to show you the first sentence that you know, so you know how to do this. So my first sentence says, three of the most important ancient Greek gods included Zeus, god of the sky, Poseidon, god of the sun, and Apollo, god of music, poetry, and art. So I'm going to write that now in my paragraph. I'm going to miss a line after my subheading, and then I'll start my writing. Nice capital letter. Three of the most important gods included this. Then I use my brackets to give more information. God of now this is the bit I want you to be to notice. I'm going to carry on writing on this line of the sky. I've started a new line because I know that sky includes a descender, and I don't want that to go into my in God of the Sky, close brackets, comma. Biden. God of, now I'm going to start my new line because I'm not going to draw in my image box of D and Apollo. God. Of music, poetry, and art. Okay, so there's an example of my first sentence. What I will do now is write the rest of my paragraph. I will write my next sentence along these lines, just going up to my image, and then the rest of my sentences I will write underneath here. If I need to go onto my next page, I will just carry on writing over here. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and finish my paragraph. I want you to do the same as I have just done. Okay, here you can see my paragraph about the gods and it is actually fitted onto my page perfectly. I promise you I didn't plan that. So I can now invisible tick my paragraph about the gods on my checklist. And um, I also remember to include any corrections in my final draft. So in my first draft, I changed my noun Apollo to the pronoun he, and I've included that in my last sentence. Now, next we've got our image of a god. So in your image box, you can choose which god you would like to draw an image of. Make sure it's a god that you have written about in your text. So I am going to choose to draw um, Poseidon in my box um, and I'm going to use my uh, information sheet that we've used over the past three weeks to help me with my drawing. So I'm just going to do that now and um, you can do the same. So I'm just going to pause my screen and do that now. So there you can see my uh, image of Poseidon. If you've got any colours, you can colour that in two. So invisible tick for my image. Next up is my caption. So remember my caption just describes which god your image is of. So I'm going to write in my caption, Poseidon. And that's it. I'm just going to write Poseidon. If you wanted to write Poseidon, god of 
the C, you could do, but my caption tells my reader who my um, image is of. So invisible tick for my caption. Okay, next up on my list is my subheading that is goddesses. Okay, so I'm now going to go onto my next page. If you have still got some room on your page here, you're just going to miss a line and write your subheading underneath. So, goddesses. So write that on my next line in the middle. And I'm going to underline it. Invisible tick for my subheading of the goddesses just here. Now I'm going to write my paragraph about the goddesses. So this is the paragraph that we um, wrote yesterday. Again, before I do that, I'm going to draw my image box and my caption so that I can write around it. Okay, so again, I'm going to write, draw it on the right hand side of my page. If you want to, you can do it on the left hand side, it's up to you. So I'm going to do the same, I'm going to use my centimetres and do a five centimetre square. Starting at my zero, going down to five. a little bit funky there. And there we go. And then again, we just draw my caption box underneath. So a rectangle, two centimeters by five centimeters. Okay. So I will complete this once I've written my paragraph. So I'm going to rewind in my book again and find my paragraph about the goddesses, which is here. I chose to use the gap fill yesterday. So what I'm going to do now is write that underneath my subheading, making sure any changes I made or any corrections I made are included. Okay, so I'm going to pause the screen and complete that now. I'm going to remember to write along this line and then beside my, my um, image box. Okay, there we go. I have written my paragraph about the goddesses. I'm really proud of how this is looking and I'm sure yours are looking great too. What I'm going to do now is just pause and make sure that I have also included my language features. So I know I want to include complex sentences in my writing. An easy way to spot them is by finding my subordinating conjunctions. I can see one here. Although she was married to Zeus, she got very jealous when he spoke to other goddesses. A complex sentence. My subordinate clause at the beginning, have I remembered my comma? Ah, yes, I have. I want you to do the same now. Go and find your complex sentences that you've written in your gods and goddesses paragraph. Make sure they make sense. And if you've used your subordinate clause at the beginning, have you used your comma? Okay, now I need to draw my image of one of the goddesses I have written about. I am going to choose to draw uh, Artemis. I'm going to choose to draw. So again, I'm going to use my image from before to help me draw that. I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to pause my screen. Remember, you do the same. Well done everybody, here is my image of Artemis and I've tried to include her bow and arrow there as well. Invisible tick for my image. Next up is my caption. So who is my image um, showing, showing Artemis? So again, I'm just going to write the name of that god. Always remembering my capital letter. Okay, we've nearly finished everybody. Um, if you want to stop now and you feel like you've done enough, then that's absolutely fine. If you want to challenge yourself today, we're going to try and include a text box 
with some fun facts inside using our bullet points to list them. Okay, so next up is our text box. Now remember our text box stands out from the rest of our text. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is draw our text box um, onto our page. So our text box is just going to come at the end of our text here. So I'm going to misalign um, underneath my paragraph and then I'm going to draw um, a box, a rectangle, size of my page. So I'm going to draw a line here. So that's about approximately 17 centimeters. And I'm going to draw my box to the end of my paper. And back across. Now, in my box, I am going to write um, another kind of mini subheading that's going to say fun facts, okay? So I'm going to write that inside my text box. I'm going to miss a line from the top line of my text box. I'm going to write that in capital letters again, because I know my reader will want to write this, so. Nice capital letters, fun. And I'm going to use my exclamation mark like it says in my checklist. Okay, I can tick that off now. We've got one last feature to use, everybody. Well done, you're doing so well. So we're going to use our bullet points to list um, some fun facts about the ancient Greek gods and goddesses. Now, these facts do not have to be about the gods and goddesses that we have written about already. OK, so this is your chance now to choose some of your favourite facts about any of the gods and goddesses and you can write them into this box using a bullet point. OK, so I'm just going to show you um, an example of how to do this. So I'm going to now look at my facts from my bubble maps and see if there's anything fun there that I could include for my reader. Now, I have actually written about Apollo and Artemis in my non-chronological report, and I haven't mentioned that they're twins. So that's quite a fun fact that I think my um, reader will want to know. I'm going to miss a line from my fun facts subheading, um, and then I'm going to draw my bullet points, just a small dot in the middle of your line. Okay, so it doesn't sit on the line, comes in between your top and your bottom line. So here, I'm just going to write Apollo and Artemis were twins. Okay, that's a fun fact. Okay, I'm probably going to be able to fit in three fun facts into my box. Okay, it's up to you how many you choose to write in here. When you're writing your next fun fact, leave a line, write your bullet point, and then write your next fun fact. I know the next fun fact that I'm going to write is going to be about Athena, I think. I think I'm going to write about how she was born from Zeus's head. That is a fun fact that will make our reader laugh. So I'm going to write here, Athena was born out of Zeus's head. The head belongs to Zeus, so I need to use my possessive apostrophe. Zeus's name ends in an S, so it comes after that. Athena is born out of Zeus's head. Full stop. Okay, I'm going to pause my um, video now. I'm going to write my last fun fact. Now I want you to draw your fact box and write your fun facts. Well done, everybody. We are almost there. Super work year three. My final fun fact that I added into mine was Zeus and Hera had a son called Ares but they disliked him. And I made a little mistake there. I used a lowercase a rather than a capital. So I've just used my ruler there to change that. 
Remember, if you've made any mistakes, that's absolutely fine, okay? Able to make mistakes and learn from them. So here we have our final non-chronological report. Mine has managed to fit perfectly onto two pages. Yours might not have, and that is absolutely fine. Take some time now to finish your non-chronological report if you haven't done already. You can add some colour to yours if you want to, and then make sure you send over your writing to us. We can't wait to see this, this writing. You've worked so, so hard on it, and we're so, so proud of you. Well done, Year 3. Take your time with this. If you want to send it us on Monday, that's fine too. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.